Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is Chrissy T. I am back with a review on Love and Marriage Huntsville season six, episode 25. Um, the Fletchers, there is just so much to unpack in this episode because they gave us reality. They gave us reality TV and I do want to make the review solely on them, but you are here for the recap. So I'm going to give it to you, but the Fletchers, Oh, honey, they are giving us real raw reality TV. So in the latest episode, emotions are running high because now she's voicing her frustrations with Chris Jr. Because clearly he's bothered by her refusal to return his dogs. And in her confessional, she said that Chris Jr. doesn't have it all together. So sometimes her and Chris Sr. have to step in for him financially. Keep that same energy with Alexis, but, but we're going to get back to that. So she goes on to say that Chris Jr. was working for his brother Lance at a home improvement company that he had to fire him from. And Lance doesn't seem to think he needs to pay his brother his last check. Pay your brother his money, punk. Okay, yes, he may have taken extra breaks. He did the job. So pay you what pay him what you owe him. Period. How the hell you think you're not supposed to pay him? He did the job, pay him for it. So now is loaning all the kids money and not being paid back. And she said if it was up to Chris Sr., they wouldn't have a damn thing. Specifically those expensive cars they got. And so Lexus was like, okay, speaking of these expensive cars, y'all got expensive cars, but where is mine at? So Kiki uh, butts in to say, because you're reckless. And then Lexus says she saved up $1,500 and got herself a hoopty. Um, And that's how she got her first car. So are we talking recently or when you were younger? So Alexis says, while they driving around in these luxury cars, she got a 1997 Grand Am, but Nell says she a damn lie. So in Chris Sr. confessional, he says, here we go again. You know, every time an argument starts with Lexus, she bring up this damn car. So is it the truth? Is she telling the truth about the car? Because this seems to be an ongoing argument with her, according to Chris Fletcher Sr. And my thing is they are all grown adults. And she shouldn't be financially supporting them because what happens is they will have this sense of entitlement, which all the kids have, I can see. So if you're going to buy your other kids luxury cars, buy Lexus one. So Lexus goes on to say that she got treated differently. Um, she said she'd never been around this family. And they are saying she chose to isolate herself. My question is this. What happened that she chose to isolate herself from the family? Maybe she was treated differently. Was there some jealousy with the other siblings? Because they had more than she had. And then Lexis said, even when they had family vacations, she was never invited. And Nell said it's because she was being an ass and she had cursed her out. Now, Lex is denying this. She says she never cussed her out. But as she walked up to walk away, she cussed everybody out. So I do believe she did cuss Nell out more than once. And she said they barely showed up at her wedding. I don't know what that means. Uh, and then Chris, the younger daughter, she called her a bitch as she was leaving. It's like they were all attacking her. Maybe I'm looking too far in, but they were all attacking her. And hubby, why didn't you step in? Should he have stepped in or should he just let them do what they want to do? But she left without eating. <laughs> Girl, get you a plate before you leave. So, honey, Alexis got fed up and she left without eating. And she was saying everybody is lying. So everybody at the table is lying except her. Okay. And she told them all to kiss what she twists and she don't mean her wrist. She said kiss her ASS. Damn, nail included. So Nell is saying, you know, this type of thing happens all the time with Lexus. And she told Chris not to invite her. No, 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 no. We're not going to single her out. That is his daughter. And if this happens all the time, I feel like y'all should have some type of counseling 
um, to talk this out, to see things from her point of view, because everybody want to talk and not listen. So yes, y'all need to figure this out. So Alexis, she gets up and leave and takes her hubby with her. And I think that her and her dad has unresolved issues that they need to work out between the two of them. And I think that the way she's expressing herself, it's coming from a place of uh, bitterness about them showing preferential treatment to her siblings, her being shut out. You know, she's seeing them have things that she wanted. So, yeah, there is some um, bitterness in her heart about this. And I do feel like she was ganged up on. And she was. But what got me is she said she should set the whole damn house on fire. Now, that that was totally unexpected. And that is coming from a place of anger and resentment. And she said that Mr. Fletcher didn't come into her life until she was 28. And they both agreed that he hasn't always been there for her. But he is now. Uh, let's sort of speak. So this girl is hurt. She feels singled out. She feels unheard. And I would too. And then to watch them go at her at the same time. Um, Kayla calling her a, a, a bish. Kiki saying she should smack the piss out of her. That was a lot. And Mr. Fletcher is saying that the only reason she says she feels left out. When she brings up the claims that she feels she don't get the same treatment. It's always talking about a car. So I guess he doesn't, he ain't buying her story. He's saying her mistreatment is only due to materialistic things and not emotional. But with her saying that he just came into her life at 28, it's not just that, but yeah, I get it, girl. And I hope this family gets counseling. Well, Mr. Fletcher and his daughter first. So in the next scene, we see Stormy and her husband. They're talking about the fall and rise of Canvas Beauty because they did have a, uh, the company grew so fast and then they had a major setback and they had to get rid of, rid of people that was a hindrance to the company's growth. So then they discussed the firing um, of her little cousin and her husband was like, well, you know, I just hired him back. And he said that because Canvas Beauty got a second chance, he believed in giving Junior a second chance. And she was like, well, what? damn, why did I hire, fire him in the first place? And he said that, you know, he feels confident in his decision. And she said, you know, because you let me walk in my lane and you trust my decisions as a business owner, I'm going to trust your decisions that you are making a good choice by hiring the cousin back. So it's, it seemed like the reason he was fired in the first place is because he was always on his phone. And they showed us a scene where Junior and Courtney was talking and he said, you know, I'm going to bring you back and I believe I'm making the right decision. So make us proud. And there's an old saying that business and family don't mix. And that is so true because when the two intersect, it can complicate decision makings um, and create conflicts like trying to hire Junior back, for instance. So, yeah, that can be difficult trying to work with family. So try to separate the two, if possible, because it, things can get complicated. They feel like because they work for you, y'all related, they can do what they want to do. They can be on the phone all the time. They can call out when they want to not show up. They can be a no call, no show. It just it gets it gets really complicated. So try to avoid that at, at all possible. And it can also create some division and hostility. Because again, because your family works for you, they feel entitled. So then they discuss, you know, Stormy bringing Tiffany and Kiki to have a sit down and sort out the issues between them. And it's usually Tiff throwing shots at Kiki for no apparent reason. Um, she went on Carlos King interview and acted a fool. She had all this stuff to say about Kiki. So we want you to keep that same energy when y'all meet up. But of course, as we saw um, last week when they were showing us a preview of this week episode, we will see her bring her baby with her as a shield. How tacky. And when Stormy imitated Tiff, honey, that was so spot on. I was cracking up because that is Tiff. 
she comes off aggressive in her confessionals, but then want to act like Karen in person. Are we better than that? I mean, are we? I know I am, but are you? I didn't think someone can be irrelevant and irrelevant at the same time. Like, that's exactly how she sounded. So in the next scene, Martel has finally moved out. Okay, he's moving into his own crib. And he called Chris Fletcher to share the good news. So in the midst of that, Martel is saying that he had to move now because he's having cosmetic surgery. <laughs> okay, he's getting bags removed from the under eye. Right, exactly. I will speak to this too. So he's trying to hurry up and move because once he had the surgery, he's going to be on bed rest. He's removing bags from underneath his eye. Why? I mean, is it causing complications? What? Why? I mean, I guess he's entitled to spend his money as he choose, but I've never heard that. Hmm. Okay, Martel. So Chris finally checked Martel, said, listen, don't be talking to my damn wife like you're crazy either. And that was the end of that scene. So moving on. In the next scene, Melody is with her BFF she met in college. Okay, they have been best friends uh, since then. And Mel is feeling some type of way that her best friend didn't make it to her name change ceremony because she had more important things to do, like attend her niece, Sweet 16. And in my opinion, Mel didn't really give a damn. That wasn't a good enough reason for her. She was still pissed that she didn't show up. It's not that she didn't show up. It's that she couldn't miss her niece, Sweet 16. Like, that's a big deal. And in my opinion... Melody didn't seem to think that her best friend going to her sweet 16 party of her niece was a big deal. She thought that her ceremony was more important, in my opinion. And her friend had to remind her, listen, I wanted to be a part of it. I even gave you ideas that you incorporated into the ceremony and she was still being ungrateful. So Melody is saying that her best friend was there when she met Martel. She was there when she married him. She was there during the, the divorce and she wanted her to be there for her name change ceremony. Girl, she was busy. And if it's that important to you, have another one, which is what her friend suggested. She said, I really wanted to be there. So how can I make it up to you? Maybe you should have another one and I can be in attendance. So Mel was like, no, I have a better idea. How about you be involved in helping me select my new love? And her friend was like, okay, bet. But her new love, she doesn't want it to be in Huntsville. And so <laughs> Melody says she has some international vagina. She trying to take that vagina abroad, even to Dubai. Ooh. I mean, get you a Nigerian man. Phaedra has one. Shamia has one. Portia has one. Nini has one. Hell, even Carlos has one. So yeah, try to get you a Nigerian man. That seems to be a trend in Georgia. So, yeah, go for it, girl. So, in the next scene, uh, Nell meets with Chris at her office. And they're talking about the chaos that took place at dinner. So, he's saying that Lexi says she's always being mistreated. But he don't understand how she feel mistreated. Because the only thing she talks about is the Mercedes and the BMW. So, I guess you forgot about her saying that you wasn't a part of her life until she was 28. You forgot about her saying she's not being invited to family functions. I mean, what you didn't hear that? So Nell is hurt because she hasn't talked to Chris Jr. Um, since the dinner. After several attempts to reach him, he hasn't responded to her text messages. He hasn't called her back. So, so what happens is, so he's upset. And that's how kids are. You give them and you give and you give. And the moment that you don't, it's like you never gave them ever. They forget you gave to them, you know, so often. So the one time you say no, it's like you never said yes. The umpteenth times. And she's not realizing that she's enabling them. They're going to constantly be in your wallet until you learn to set boundaries. And you should have started early, but now they're grown adults. And they're going to keep being in your pockets. Why? Why? Because you're going to keep being there. You may argue with them or whatever. 
express your frustrations, but you're going to still give them what they want. These grown kids got to learn how to be adults. But if they want to be in your pockets and you have a right to speak to them the way that you want. You can go from zero to 100 if you want to, if you're constantly taking care of them. So Mr. Fletcher is saying, you know, well, Nell says she wants to move forward. And Mr. Fletcher is saying that the, they may need counseling and that I, I agree with. So in the next episode, we see Stormy and Kiki, you know, they're preparing to meet up with Tiff. Um, and Kiki is saying that Tiff is always coming at her. And then turns it around as if Kiki is coming at Tiff. And she's absolutely right. And they show the scene with uh, Tiffany and Carlos. And she went low. Talking about that she knew Kiki from her son. Um, apparently they had a football game, I guess. And Kiki jumped the fence because she couldn't, she didn't want to pay to get in. Now that was low. This is what she said in Carlos' interview. Tiff always have Kiki name in her mouth and then crying victim. Yes, you are entitled to give your opinions on things, but you crossed the line when you told Melody that she was doing some shady business in order to get her son to switch schools. And then when you were on Carlos' show talking about she jumped the fence and acting like you're better than her. And she's beneath you. And the issues that they have is because Tiff is always talking about her. And Kiki said that, you know, she hate to have to teach her a lesson. But if push comes to shove, I'm going to do that. So, of course, Tiffany shows up with her son as her shield. Now, notice she didn't have the baby with her when her and, Stammy, when her, when her and Stormy met up. But your punk ass brought the baby with you at the barbecue and now you're bringing a baby with you now that y'all are meeting about stuff. You don't have the balls to stay in her face. Keep the same energy you had in your confessionals. How dare she bring that baby as a shield of protection? <laughs> I can't. So that's the end of that scene. But next week we see the continuation of Kiki uh, checking Tiff. And then Martel and Chris, they exchange words. Tisha thinks she's pregnant. And then Mr. Fletcher showing love to his son. I would have liked to see him show that kind of love to his daughter. That's all I'm saying. He said to his son, I love you so much and I will drop anything to be there for you. I would have loved to see you say that to Lexi because that's what she needs right now. She already feel like she was abandoned and that you love your other children more than her. I would have liked to see you embrace her like that. I'm sure that would have made a difference in the exchange y'all had at dinner. I honestly think it wouldn't have went that far if he just acknowledged her feelings and cry, cry to her like he was crying to Chris Jr. <laughs> and I'm done, child. Ugh.